I am Professor Marcia Wicknell. I'm a Professor of Conflict Health and Military Medicine at King's College London. And this video is part of a series on security and military health. And this video will cover national health systems and the context of security and military health systems. So the learning outcomes from this video, we will consider a range of definitions of a health system. We will consider the components of a health system and we'll consider who provides health services. And we will also then identify key sources of information on health systems. And the purpose of this is to aid your understanding of national health services as important to understanding security and military health systems. And I'd just like to give you three definitions. The first is I use the phrase national health services to cover all health services providers within a single country. I use the phrase security <coughs> to cover the institutions that provide national security, both internal and external to a country. For instance, the army, the police or border force. And finally, I use the term military to cover the uniformed armed forces that provide external security such as armies, navies, and air forces. So what we will cover, firstly, a discussion on how do you access healthcare? Then what is a health system? Who provides health services? And then how you might identify health service providers? And finally, the sources of information on health systems. And this video is based on a paper published in BMJ Military Health understanding the structure of a country's health service providers for defense health engagement. So to start off with, how do you access healthcare? And what I'd like you to do is to consider what health care services you might need, all the types of healthcare services that might exist, how you access those, how they're organized and how they're paid for. And if you'd like to press pause at this point, and then just write down some notes against each of those five bullets. From a personal perspective, I'm privileged to live in the United Kingdom in the Southeast, and I have access to health services that cover prevention, health promotion and clinical care. And in the UK, this is organized through the National Health Service, which is free at point of use and is structured around primary and community care services and hospital services, both secondary care at local hospitals and tertiary care uh, regional or referral hospitals. And so starting off with primary care services, I access GP services um, from a surgery called Richmond Surgery. And if you look at the Google map on the bottom left of the slide, it shows all of the uh, primary care surgeries uh, nearby where I'm living. If I need to get urgently admitted to hospital, I'm picked up by the uh, local ambulance service and the image shows the uh, location of the nearest ambulance station. And finally, I'm taken to um, a local hospital for emergencies. That is Trimley Park Hospital, but there are a number of community hospitals and a number of private hospitals around where I live. And through government funding, I am fortunate in that I have very minimal uh, risk of catastrophic financial collapse as a result of needing to have health care. Whilst I've only covered uh, doctor led primary, primary care services and hospital services, there's a wide range of other uh, health services that are provided um, to support the local community. And this slide lists them, including pharmacists, opticians, dental care, maternity care, mental health care, physiotherapy and rehabilitation, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So when we consider health services, we should be holistic in considering all of these types of um, health services that are tailored to meet the needs of individual populations. So we're lucky, or certainly I'm lucky, uh, because I live in a, a reasonably well-financed healthcare system that's uh, organized through national taxation. That is not the case for the vast majority of people who live on our planet. And so it's well worth considering 
how uh, healthcare is accessed, particularly in areas of crisis or emergency. Um, and this video that I've shown as the link here is a very good summary of the uh, health services available in northeast Nigeria, which is an area subject to quite considerable uh, conflict and insecurity. Uh, and if you want to watch that, just cut and paste the link into YouTube and you'll find that video. So what I hope I've done is just introduced you to the idea that um, when one considers a health system, one should consider health services and try and take a patient's perspective on access to health services rather than a top-down system approach. So the components of a health system, perhaps best summarized by this uh, World Health Organization building blocks framework, which includes service delivery, but there are other components such as the workforce, health information services, the whole um, uh, logistics and equipment support requirements for the health services, the method of financing, and then overall the, the framework for leadership and governance of the health service. Um, all of those inputs are processed to deliver, um, hopefully, health outcomes on the right hand side, uh, improved health, uh, responsiveness to the health needs of a population, protection against social and financial risk, and maximize efficiency in the consumption of resources across this system. And one way of considering it as a process diagram is structure, process, output and outcome um, first proposed by a public health uh, physician, Donna Beden, and definitely recommend look him up on Google and just understand the um, process aspect of running a health system. Now, this video is about service delivery. So let's now move on to consider the variety of types of healthcare providers. One way of doing this is to type hospitals into Google and choose your country and choose your city. And that will provide quite a simple overview of all of the types of hospital providers. Uh, and this image shows um, the map of Ghana, uh, sorry, Accra, the capital of Ghana. And you can see the hospitals marked. And just by looking at some of the names, you can get an indication of the types of services that the hospital provides, possibly the type of funder and the type of beneficiary. So for instance, uh, top center, there's the Lister Hospital and Fertility Center. So that's probably a maternity hospital. There in the middle, there are uh, medical center and clinics. These probably are private providers um, and may provide community-based or diagnostic services. And dropping down, you'll see there's a hospital labeled the Eurocare Advanced Diagnostic and Heart Center. And that is probably a private hospital that provides uh, specifically those services for cardiac patients. If you look on the left of the um, screenshot, you can see that, um, for instance, you've got the 37 military teaching hospital. And that's then an indication of the type of provider, the military probably also an indication of the type of beneficiary or population served. So mapping is quite a good tool to give an overview of the breadth of um, services and the type of providers that are available in a geographic area. So bringing that together, um, the paper that I have described essentially is a, a discussion around the diagram shown on this slide. Firstly, it separates out health service providers into those that are provided by the state and those that are not provided by the state or the, go the government. Uh, and on the right hand side, you can have independent private health services, which can be commercial, not for profit or informal. Uh, what I mean by informal, for instance, is a community pharmacist. Um, in many countries, these are private small businesses. Um, and are a therefore an independent independent provider of part of the health service that is separate from government control however in some countries 
a mechanism for paying for pharmaceuticals involves some form of government support. So in the United Kingdom, for instance, the government pays private pharmacies to dispense um, pharmaceuticals and drugs to um, NHS patients. And the patient pays a small co-payment but does not have to pay the full cost of providing that drug. And then finally, on the non-state group, you've got international agencies, non-government organizations and charities. Uh, and these are particularly important providers of service in areas of crisis. Uh, and you'll be familiar with, for instance, Médecins Sans Frontières and the International Committee of the Red Cross as to international um, charitable or non-government organizations. Coming to the left of the diagram, I've listed the state areas um, and have looked at it from the perspective of the government departments that provide services. So the Ministry of Health um, will provide the regulatory system um, for the provision of health services, which cuts across the entire range of providers. That includes, for instance, the method of registration of professional qualification. The Ministry of Health might also be a direct supplier of health services, depending on the system of funding. And at the bottom of the diagram, I've put Ministry of Finance straight Ministry of Social Security. And there are different ways of funding government services, depending on the, the mechanism by which money is both uh, recruit from populations and then transmitted to service providers. I put the Ministry of Higher Education because that, as well as being responsible for providing health education and training, the Ministry of Higher Education might run the teaching hospitals that provide both the training and experience for uh, healthcare workers, but also then provide clinical services. And at the bottom right, I've put the security ministries of defense, interior and justice. Um, and these provide health services to uh, armed forces or uniformed personnel, possibly including their families, possibly including civilians. So actually is a important component of the overall um, health service provider system in a country. Overlaying that, I've put in um, fine dots, some of the types of clinical service. So for instance, uh, curative care might be the primary responsibility of the Ministry of Health through Ministry of Health run hospitals, or actually all of the providers might provide some aspect of curative, curative care. Similarly, that might involve the same for public health and prevention, such as uh, screening services or vaccination and immunization services. Uh, and the final group I've considered is emergency preparedness and response. That includes both the um, routine um, ambulance services, but also the mechanism for mobilizing the healthcare system in response to national emergencies. Uh, and the armed forces particularly might play a role as part of the nation's um, crisis response system. So with that as a conceptual diagram, let's now move on and uh, examine how one might identify the different uh, providers in this model. And going back to the idea of using mapping as one way of identifying those providers. Why don't you conduct a Google search choosing a country capital? I've suggested some Kathmandu in Nepal, Baku in Azerbaijan, um, Nairobi in Kenya. And then in the search nearby box, type in hospital. And then you can categorize each hospital by type of provider. So one way of doing that is to actually put um, the adjective in front of the word hospital. Uh, and the other is just to see according to the description of each of the hospitals, what type of provider they are. And at the bottom, I've also provided some other examples that I know work quite well with this type of search. So let's take uh, Nepal and Kathmandu as an example. You just type in hospital. And you can see here there's um, 
a large number of hospitals that are part of the healthcare network in Kathmandu and in Nepal. Um, and these include teaching hospitals, children's hospitals, um, dental hospitals, um, and uh, private clinics. So this gives an indication of the breadth of service providers within Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. Uh, if you break that down, um, Nairobi, um, Kenya, what I've typed in here is private hospital. And you can see the number of hospitals that um, are designated as private hospitals. Uh, I particularly highlight here um, that one hospital's uh, label is in Chinese characters. And that's perhaps an indication of the size of the Chinese dependent population that wishes to get access to um, hospital care in Nairobi. Uh, third example um, is I typed in uh, military hospital and searched in Baku. And you can see that there's actually quite a number of um, military related hospitals and clinics in the capital. And that also gives you an indication of the breakdown of different types of security service. So you can see um, there is a hospital labeled internal troops. Uh, and there's also a hospital labeled state security service. And these may be different from the conventional uniformed armed forces. And that begins to give an indication of the breakdown of different types of healthcare provision for different components of a country's security forces. So finally, let's just think where we might find um, additional information. And here I've listed a number of sources of information on national health systems. Um, the World Health Organization has both the Global Health Observatory that provides um, high level uh, input and outcome measures for uh, health systems across the world. And then there's a deeper dive to the European health system in the WHO European office. The OECD and the World Bank also look at health systems more from an economic perspective and look at the economic efficiency of health systems in terms of the cost to um, put finance into the system um, against the level of healthcare outcomes for populations. Uh, and the final group in the civilian listing is the Commonwealth Fund, which compares health systems between uh, the Commonwealth countries to quite some considerable depth. And there's one source of data on military health systems, and that's the Almanac Military Medical Corps Worldwide, and I've given you the link to that as well. Hopefully that's whetted your appetite for thinking about the relationship between security and military health systems to wider national economies. And as part of understanding that relationship, there are some other global health topics that's worth considering. And I've put these as questions. The first one is, what is universal health coverage and how does UHC link to health systems? And this very much links to the question of um, health as a component of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The next question is, uh, what will be the impact of COVID-19 on health systems and UHC? A very live question uh, going into uh, 2021 and will play out over several years after we've managed to uh, get on top of the COVID pandemic. Pose the question, how does overseas development assistance support health system strengthening um, and what is the role between um, international financial assistance for countries health systems and uh, international direction and expertise versus indigenous capability uh, and the final question is what is the contribution of security sectors health systems to a country's health economy uh, and we'll pick that subject up um, as part of a separate video in this series. I've also provided some background papers, some books and some videos that might help in further 
uh, study in this topic. So what have we done? We've considered a range of definitions of a health system. We've considered the components of a health system. We've considered who provides health services and have identified key sources of information on health systems. And all of this helps in understanding um, the importance of national health services and its relationship to understanding security and military health systems. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, hopefully you will uh, look to other videos about this topic.